Hello, I'm Denise, the content analyst for Enjurati, and we're coming live to you from the African Utility Week studio. And with us today, we have Caroline Farson. She's the engineer, a senior engineer at DNVGL. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. How is the event going so far, it being day one? Yes, it's day one, but I think uh, so far it's been very interesting. Fantastic. We've seen uh, quite a lot of uh, clients and, and okay. potential new um, um, people to cooperate with. So uh, yeah, it's always quite a, a big mix of, of people walking around here. So uh, yeah, so far so good. Super. Well, um, we, we were going to talk about the importance of um, smarter renewables operation management. Um, what is the importance of this and what drives it? So I think um, nowadays we have more and more uh, projects coming uh, in the operational phase. So in fact, it's, there are more projects operational now than have been ever before. And uh, so we see a bit of a shift from um, the new building new capacity in renewable energy projects, both wind and, and solar, um, to more and more projects that are now operational. And, and that also makes a shift towards um, yeah, an increased focus on, on the performance of these operational projects. And um, yeah, there's a lot to win actually in, in that phase. And so whereas previously there was a big focus on, on getting more and more uh, electricity and more um, installed capacity from renewable energy sources, we now do see that uh, also by improving your performance and by improving your operations, you can actually uh, gain a lot and um, increase your electricity generation, um, and reduce your cost and, and boost your boost your revenue um, and also I think for operational the operational period for these renewable energy projects is, is quite long mm. so it can be 50 years or 20 years or even up to yeah. 25 years right. so whatever you can gain in, uh, in, in that period uh, you can gain for quite a long period of time and that makes it very interesting also from a financial perspective yeah. to make sure that everything is, is in place right okay um, why should this particular service be outsourced? Um, I think due to the, um, the long term of this operational phase, you do need professional management of your operational assets. And uh, not, all not all project companies or not, not all projects do have the resources um, to do that in-house. Or it might not be viable to, to have all the, you know, you need particular skills to, um, to operate this in, a, in the most optimal way. So they might not have those type of services in-house, might not be viable to attract those people. And that's why also our company, Dean VGL, tries to um, offer an alternative as in outsourced assets management. Right. So we are operating or we are uh, monitoring now more than 50 gigawatts of um, like operational assets. Okay and uh, have a lot of experience in, uh, in monitoring and analyzing uh, data and doing inspections. And so if you do that on a daily basis, yeah. then um, it's easier to know what, what risks are, are yeah. involved and, and, and how you can address, uh, address certain issues. Um, a lot of people have their, like you have your availability warranties for, for these projects. And, um, and it, but it doesn't stop there. So you have your availability warranty is maybe like 3% of, um, of your, your, your total project. And 97% is your efficiency. And so the 97% efficiency, that is an area that is uh, kind of an untapped resource, I would say. You can improve that a lot. And that is where we are trying to um, yeah, offer a, a complete range of services from inspections to um, performance measurements, uh, SCADA data analysis, these kind of things to, to increase your efficiency and to make sure that uh, projects get the most out of their, their assets. Right. Right. Um, in Africa um, in particular, I know it's a huge continent, but um, perhaps you have found um, certain challenges or, or um, certain instances where uh, utilities um, just don't get around 
to uh, proper asset management, renewables asset management, or, or other than perhaps maybe the obvious such as finance, for instance, what else is stopping them from, from attaining this? Yeah, it's funny you say Africa actually because I think it's a global uh, uh, way of thinking that once you have your project operational, you yeah. know, it goes as it goes. So we have, um, there's a bit of a threat for inertia where we just keep doing things the way we are used to do them. Um, whereas, in fact, if we would really scrutinize the data, um, you can actually bring that data, you know, gain insight and then bring that insight into action to, to increase your performance and um, uh, produce more electricity, reduce your cost, etc. So I do see we are now shifting to, uh, because reducing cost is obviously a worldwide uh, theme which is very important. Right, right. So I do see that um, um, there's more attention for, for operations. And um, yeah, it also has a lot to do with understanding that, that uh, the improvement of your operations could be a massive improvement of your, also your financial results. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe just to give you an example, we, we are doing a lot of power performance measurements. Right. So for example, wind turbines, get a power curve warranty and um, we are doing these power curve measurements for over 20 years now and what we see is that often they are there's an underperformance of about two percent and that's quite a lot if you yeah. calculate that on a, on an annual basis we're talking about six hundred thousand dollar per year or like nine million rands um, every year right. and, that's, and that's only if you are really looking into the data because your data will still be available but um, uh, and, and your turbines will be available so you don't see that in any availability warranty but if you look into the data and if you um, do your measurements then that can be very beneficial for, for all projects. And it's really all about harnessing that data um, in an appropriate manner, isn't it? It's, it's, otherwise it's worth nothing. And scrutinizing <laughs> the data indeed yeah. and then bring that to like information yeah. or intelligence. Yeah, exactly. And then if you have, can address those issues, then you can bring that into action and hopefully uh, with that improve yeah. the performance of your, of your assets. Yeah. So, so when you're um, going to utilities and you're trying to offer them this, um, you know, this service, um, this management service, uh, what do you find is your biggest challenge? Um, because the, the, surely this, the figures should speak volumes, you know, efficiency, operational efficiency yeah. should speak volumes. And does it? Well, it's not always that clear what you can gain from it right from the beginning. Right. So we see that doing a lot of projects, we see that it often happens where um, it, it helps to have an independent view on right. the data, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. So with these power performance tests, for example, but also if you look at the availability data, um, we often have cases where the, the contractors, give a, if the uh, availability numbers are not met, yeah. they provide you with a like indication of, of what the liquidated damages would be. If you scrutinize the SCADA data, um, what, we, what we do for clients, and we kind, kind of um, allocate some, some downtime which was um, allocated incorrectly, and sometimes we can get like 10 times as much liquidated damages um, as from the start. Right. So the advantages are clearly there. They, they could be there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this is clearly, um, as far as, you know, it, it can change quite a lot of things, you know, for operational efficiencies, um, you know, even financial viability, it, it definitely changes, it shifts the um, uh, renewables development quite a bit, doesn't it? It does, and also on the, on the, the viability side and the bankability side of yeah. projects. Yeah. Um, it, it works very well if you're doing like proper inspections um, or due diligence of your existing assets as well. That can actually highlight any financial risk or technical risk uh, and um, and address these issues before you're actually going to invest in, uh, in such projects. Really saving a lot of a lot of time and a lot of money in the long run. Yeah, it, it's yeah. really worth doing that in advance yeah. Um, yeah. because if you've invested in it already, then you might be too late and. Like I said, on an annual basis, these numbers can, can add up quite a bit. Yes. So I think it's important that um, you have all bits and pieces for, for the operational phase. 
that you have like an integrated approach where you can do a lot of things to increase your uh, your performance to get safe and effective asset management. Right, right. Um, and in my, you've already um, uh, laid out all, uh, many, many opportunities with regards to asset management as far as renewables go. But um, your your parting words to your to utilities or to the energy sector, specifically in Africa, what would they be? I think. Um, um, it would be very good to realize the, the ginormous benefit that Africa can have. Um, with the, the latest projects, or sorry, the, fir the first projects actually that were in operation are, um, are getting now towards the end of their warranty term. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it could be very beneficial to do end of warranty inspections, see if there are any uh, uh, difficulties or any items that might not have been performing as would have expected or not according to the contracts. So these can be replaced or warranties can be extended. Um, and to take a look at the full scope of, of smarter operations to, to boost um, revenues. Great, thanks Caroline for that sound advice. Great. Thank you very much for the interview. I hope you enjoy the rest of the, um, the event. Thank you very much, <laughs> you too. Thank you. <laughs> and um, thank you for watching us. Um, I am Denise from Enjirati coming to you live from African Utility Week Studio.